I'd like to welcome each and every one of you this evening. And on behalf of Logan College, on behalf of the Green Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Church, and on behalf of Williams Temple Church of God in Christ, we welcome you to this service and thank you very, very much for coming. Over 3,000 years ago, the ancient prophet wrote these words. He wrote, this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. We've all come together this evening to do just that. We've all come together this evening to rejoice, to give thanks, and to share in this very special worship service and tribute to James Melvin Young, poet, professor, and true servant of God. So let us begin this wonderful worship service this evening with the singing of the great memorial AME Zion Church Choir and we welcome you.
remembering Father as well, the old time gospel preachers whose messages Mr. Johnson captured in the seven morning quotes published in 1927 under the title Gosh and Moses. Tonight we remember Mr. Johnson's career as a civil rights leader, founder of the NAACP, poet, diplomat, professor, and leader of the Harvard Renaissance of the 1920s and 30s. He is listed among the 100 most important African American leaders in our nation. His wife, Grace Hill Johnson, a New Yorker, was an accomplished artist in her own right and collaborated with her husband in many areas of his work with his art. This year marks the 78th anniversary of James Baldwin Johnson's death at the age of 67. He was a professor at this university in a location not far from here in his Catholic name. Tragically, a train struck his automobile. Over 2,000 people attended his funeral in 1938. Tonight's worship service is not only to James Wilson Johnson, but to the American religious history and the countless African American gospel preachers who provided peace, courage, and faith into the minds of the generations. We hope that what we offer this evening in worship will illuminate earlier days of American religious history, but far, far more that it will encourage the women and inspire all who gather together in this chapel.
that God stands back with the entire process, moreover God is above it, and accomplishes it merely by speaking his word, which is the Hebrew way of saying, he did it by his thought. That's from Robert Claude Denham. The most beautiful and most profound experience is the sensation of the mystical. It is the sword of all true science. Moreover, to know that what is impenetrable to us really exists, manifesting itself as the highest wisdom and the most radiant beauty. This knowledge, this view, is at the center of true religiousness. And that was what Albert Einstein. And finally, the biblical story did not hesitate to use holy human language to reveal the indescribable mystery. God, assisted by Sophia or Mother Wisdom, brings forth the creation. If we let ourselves wake up to the earth's beauty, we may also wake up to the need to preserve. The sacredness of planet Earth is perhaps the most important unifying factor in all the new spirituality. That was by Robert Storm. First of James Ronald Johnson's sermons in verse and perhaps in most things. It is the Genesis story of creation, and it is entitled The Creation. And God stepped out of space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make you a world. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything. Blacker than a hundred million. Down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other. And God said, That's good. Then God reached out and took the light in his hands, and God rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun. And he set that sun ablaze in the heavens, and the light that was left from the and God gathered it up in a shining ball and flung it against the darkness. Thankfully, the nights with the moon and stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world. And God said, That's good. Then God himself stepped down. And the sun was on his right hand, and the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked. And where he trod, his footsteps follow the valley out and bubbles the mountain top. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and bare. So God stepped over the edge of the world and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes and the lightning flashed. He clapped his hands and the thunder rolled. And the waters above the earth came down, the cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted, and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his finger to the sky, and the oak spread out his arms. The lakes settled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the sea. And God smiled again, and the rainbow appeared, and curled itself around the 
Oh, God. 
you would find moans and groans in the background and in the foreground. The congregation, when hearing the truth, would say, Preacher. They would say, Yes.
But God said, I will be thy mouth and I will be thy tongue. Therefore, Moses, go down. Go down yonder into Egypt land and tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses with his rod in hand went down and said to Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. And Pharaoh looked at Moses and he stopped still and looked at Moses and he said to Moses, who is the Lord? I know all the gods of Egypt, but I know not the God of Israel. So go back, Moses, and tell your God, I will not, I shall not, I will not let this people go. Poor old Pharaoh, he knows all the knowledge of Egypt, yet never knew. He never knew the one and living God. Poor old Pharaoh, he got all the power of Egypt. He's going to try to test his strength with the might of the great Jehovah, with the might of the Lord God of hosts, the Lord mighty in battle. And God, sitting high up in heaven, laughed at poor old Pharaoh. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. 
now made a peace, a peace which passed.